Alright, so welcome back and on this one we need to talk about the audio sidechain. So, uh, right here we got some uh, some kick. I'm gonna go show you what, what we have right here. Alright, so very simple, just very simple stuff. So I get a kick because it's a very kind of a transient peak. If I add a snare which has, which has more transients, we're gonna be able to kind of detect this a little bit more with the audio sidechain, but uh, the claps are just gonna be a little bit too hard to hear, so I'm gonna go right here and bring a filter, and this is this, this filter, it's right here on this kick. So as soon as I play this, you're just filtering frequencies, right? You're just getting rid of the high frequencies. Okay, that, that's fine. So I'm gonna go and uh, bring this audio sidechain. So this one, what it will do, it will listen to whatever incoming signal, audio signal, that it's entering right here. And then it will perform kind of a movement, like an ADSR. It will provide an instruction of how something needs to move. It's just a modulation device. And I'm gonna go and play it. And by default, notice that we get something right here. It goes up and down, and it's following the motion that we uh, that we are getting from the uh, from the from the kick. Right. So of course, this is what it does. Now, right, right here, you have some controls. For example, like the rise and the fall, and then you get the filters. And notice that again, you get a representation of what's coming in to this signal, to this uh, side chain, to this device. And whatever is wide is what you're uh, getting at the end, what your this audio sidechain is recognizing. And this is the filters doing its job. So if I go all the way down, we are just not doing any filtering. And this is because sometimes you just don't want to hear to the whole thing. You just want to hear the transient in order to get something very specific right here. Because remember, this is the one that's going to do the modulation and it's going to follow this instruction, you know, up and down, up and down. Now, if I remove the filters, notice this has kind of a very soft, kind of a smooth, uh, you know, uh, motion. As soon as I'm going to start filtering, everything is going to get just a little bit different. Notice that the envelope is not that smooth anymore. We get kind of a more of a peak and then goes down. So yeah, so the filter is important. So in this case, we are just filtering a kick. So this is how it sounds. We have some high frequencies. We can see it right here. And then we have the peak, which is like the main or maybe the fundamental. So what I can do in this case, maybe I don't want anything of this. I'm just going to go and listen just to the more uh, transient part, which is the peak. So now whenever we uh, we work with the sidechain, this is going to be listening to this and not the rest to create this envelope. And then you have the rise and the fall. And these ones are very important. And this one works just like a compressor. Now, of course, it's not like a compressor. It's just the main idea. This would be the attack and this would be the release. Now, notice whenever the sound comes in, we get this initial kind of a peak. Start somewhere, right? Starts right here at the beginning. So this is the, the is going to be the rise, the attack. So if I go all the way down, it's going to be as soon as we get this transient, this envelope will react. And that's why we get a super, uh, you know, sharp peak right there. As I go up, the attack is going to be less recognizable. You know, it's just going to get a little bit less of that peak. So we're going to start getting less because we are getting less of this peak. And it's, at one point, we just get nothing because we are just, you know, removing uh, or just waiting too much to get this peak and this peak already passed. So that's why you, we don't get an envelope. But you just need to go right here and select and just work this like you would with a compressor. All right. And I'm going to go over right here and this is the fall, which is going to be the release. Notice that right now this transition is going to be kind of a super fast. As I, as I go down or go up in this case, the transition is going to be a little bit more smooth. It's going to go to the upper part and then it's going to go down in a more kind of a smooth way. And this is because you're making a long release. Notice how it changes. Very different. So right here, whenever you have a sound, you just need to select or filter whatever you don't want. And of course, this will react differently to different sources. This is a kick, but it's going to work different with a clip or maybe a clap or some whatever. So, okay, so this is the envelope. This is, this is the instruction that we get. And we get it by selecting the filters and the rise and the fall. Pretty simple stuff.
So the main idea of using this is that we do some modulation. We use this envelope to modulate something. And notice we are doing that. Every time it goes right here up, it goes up and then it goes down. And remember that these controls are just very important. So let's say I'm going to go more on the rise and notice that we get a little bit less. So it's not going to go that crazy right now because we are getting less of the initial transient. Same thing with the fall. If I go all the way down, it's going to be a very fast go. Is it going to go and then all the way down? And then I'm going to go and go up on this one. And I'm going to go slow and notice that since the release is too slow, it's super slow. It's going up and then it stays it's staying right there, All right? So again, just pretty simple stuff. So okay, so remember that this controls really matter right here, right? So now, then we have other controls. Then we have this one, and then we have this one right here. So this is going to be uh, is going to be how we can uh, create how we create this envelope. Is it is going to go up, or maybe we can do something in between? Notice that it's go down, and it's because we can make it bipolar. Instead of going up, we're going to go down. All right? Pretty simple. Right. So the other thing that you get is the peak and the RMS. And this is how is detecting, uh, you know, how the sound comes in and how it's working behind the scenes. So pretty much the peak is going to react more to the transient and the RMS is going to react a little bit of the, to the body, more to the body. That's what the manual says. And uh, there's not a lot of difference. And of course, I believe that this uh, depends on the material that you're listening right here. And the other one is going to be the, uh, right here, the velocity. Notice if I go up, this goes up. I'm sorry, the gain. I'm going to go up and notice how this changes. It's almost like a square. And this is actually moving like a square. It's just up, on and off, on and off. And as you go down, of course, you're just feeding less volume to the outer side chain. So it's going to go and do less. So that's it. That's that's the audio side chain. You're just going to be listening for something and then creating a motion by using the envelope that it's being generated with, with whatever sound that comes in. And you can feed whatever you want, right? Just completely up to you. Now, notice that you do have something that says device input. And this is because you can listen to a different source that maybe it's not this one, maybe something, some other clip, and you can listen to that instead of the incoming signal. And in this case, since we have device input, whatever we have on the track is being used uh, as a side chain. But you can feed all the things if you wish. Now, I'm going to go and just prove how this works. I'm going to go and toggle this one. And this one is going to be a pretty uh, simple kind of uh, some chords and pads. And I get right, something right here with the OBXA. This is a plugin from Arturia. So this is it. This is the one. All right, so it's just a pretty simple, pretty simple sound. I'm going to go and play it, maybe lower the volume just a little bit. OBXA, just a great sound. And that's the sound. But what I want to do, I want to get the kick as well, and I want to filter the sound or do something to this sound whenever the kick hits with this motion. So for now, I'm just going to kind of uh, delete this one because we don't need it anymore, right? But now I want to go right here. I want to do some filtering and I'm going to be using that audio sidechain again. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to go do play. And now, of course, the input source is going to be something else, not the device. And notice this is a, uh, an instrument track, a MIDI track. But I'm going to say, OK, I'm going to go to the kick and I'm going to say that the pre is going to be my envelope. And we are getting it, right? just get the same thing we got we get from before we can go and just do the envelope a little more and I guess we are doing a little bit of filtering right here that's a bit better and if we go back we get something else of course because the uh, sound is just a little bit different all right Okay, that's a little bit better. I'm going to go make it like that. 
and I'm gonna feed a little bit less. Maybe there. It's okay. Now the whole point is that I'm gonna go and do some modulation in this one. It's that simple. Let's change the values just a little bit. And this one is going to work differently uh, if you come out from the filter or maybe the post. For, and let's go to the post. Notice it's just very different. We don't have a lot of volume because the post is going to be whatever comes out of the track. And notice the volume is really low. So in this case, I'm going to need to fit uh, to feed a little bit more volume. So by you doing this, you can feed whatever other a uh, audio to whatever track and then just do a little bit of modulation. That's again, the whole idea. So this is what this does. All right, so that's it. You know, I feel like I don't need to do a little, you know, more explaining because it's just very simple. You get the filter, how you were, you're gonna be working with the attack and the release. And then if you wanna go up or you're gonna go to negatives and what you're gonna be using as a source. So it's just a pretty simple device. Now then you you have other uh, other you know a different tool which is called the note sidechain. This is going to be something very related, but it's going to be a little bit different. I'm going to do it in a different video. Maybe it's going to be the next video, and hopefully you will find this useful, right? And see you on the next one. Make sure to like and subscribe and to check Patreon because everything I release right here on YouTube was already released on Patreon maybe weeks or days or months earlier. All right, to see you on the next one.